You get an LRT. You get an LRT. You get an LRT. You get an LRT. And you guys, you're getting an LRT. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're not already, please consider subscribing because it helps us out. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Of course, this just lets us reach more and more people. So, I'm exhausted. I had a test today at school. Last night was the federal election, which I stayed up very late to watch. I think it was an interesting result, uh, is what I'll say. Um, but it's time to talk LRT. In fact, the day of the federal election, Metrolinks announced that they had closed the Huron Ontario LRT tender, which essentially means their, you know, Metrolinks shook hands with the consortium, Mobililinks, or Mobililinks, I, I, I'm not a fan of all these names with links uh, appended to them, which Metrolinks seems to love. You have Crosslinks, uh, we had Grand Link, Grand Links, something along those lines. Actually, I think it's Grand Link, but with a Q. Uh, in uh, Waterloo, we now have uh, uh, Mobili Links. Uh, God knows what other names we might get in the future. Uh, I like the fact that the Finch LRT is just Mosaic Transit Group, I believe. Anyways, enough about that. Uh, the thing that's interesting is that on the day of the federal election, when everyone's eyes were looking at the uh, election and the results, etc. Metrolinx announced, oh, we've closed the Huron Ontario LRT. So, details, please. Okay, I'm glad you asked. So, essentially, the final value of the tender is $4.6 billion. That, if that sounds high, that's because it is. Uh, the actual construction cost is, I think, around, it's, it's less than $2 billion, if I recall correctly. All these additional costs are the long-term maintenance, operation, etc. Because usually with these P3s, what happens is there's like a 20 to 30 year time period where the consortium will operate the line, and then after that it kind of becomes the property of the province to operate, etc. as it likes. It could extend the contract, it could do a variety of things, but that's essentially how it works. There's not that much that's changed about this plan, but I, I did think it was worth making a video to kind of talk about the fact that Ontario is really having a LRT moment. Um, I mean, we've been having an LRT moment for quite a while, but I think it's, it's good to kind of look at where we are. Uh, before we get into talking about that, I do want to clarify some of the details of that here Ontario LRT. So the line connects from Port Credit Go up to Cooksville Go, and then further along through the kind of central area of Mississauga around Square One Shopping Center, and then further along to Brampton up to kind of Shoppers World, which is where the Brampton Gateway Terminal is. It's kind of a large-ish bus, bus terminal. Uh, the Shoppers World site is actually planned to be redeveloped, it turns out, so that would be a really good terminus, it looks like. Uh, it's unfortunate that I think a previous Brampton City Council cancelled the extension further north into Brampton because it would be awesome if this line continued up to Brampton GO Station. You'd have a line that essentially connects GO lines at the ends, uh, has another interface with the uh, Milton line, even though it doesn't have all day service yet. Uh, to be honest, neither does the Kitchener line, but it does have more service than the Milton line. The, the line essentially connects a ton of other transit, and it would have been great to see it go all the way up to Brampton Go, especially because that means people from the core of Mississauga could jump on the Huron Ontario LRT, go up to Brampton Go, and then head out to Kitchener, at which point they could get off the Go train onto another LRT and then head to their destination in Kitchener-Waterloo. In some ways, that full plan would have kind of resembled the Eglinton Crosstown. Of course, it wouldn't have gone underground at, uh, at any significant point, but it would connect go lines at the ends, and I think that's kind of a nice uh, feature. So details on the actual stops, etc. So some new renderings were released, and essentially the stops are quite basic, uh, which we kind of expected. The trains will be the Alstom trains, the same as in Ottawa. I'm sure we'll include some clips of that right now. Um, these trains are pretty decent. I do prefer them to the Bombardier trains, but it seems like at this point, as I mentioned in a previous video, Ontario really can't get a single LRT that properly works. Uh, well, LRV, you know, the vehicles that actually operate on these lines. The Bombardier ones have these production delays and welding issues, at least on the streetcars. Uh, the Alstom trains seem to have a lot of door issues. It's kind of a mess. That being said, 
Uh, the Alstom trains will be operated. I believe they're going to start as operating as four car units, so that will be four segment units, four cars segments. I, I don't like LRT vehicles very much. Anyways, though, they'll basically operate as a half of what the O train currently operates, though there is capacity for extension. I've confirmed this with the Huron Ontario LRT team, such that the platform can be extended all the way up to 100 meters, which means you can get two five car units. Uh, on the line, which is actually, that's pretty decent. That's probably uh, enough capacity to the point where if you need more than that, you should be looking at something underground or elevated. The last kind of key detail to mention is the city center in Mississauga. Originally, the plan was to have a loop around it, though as mentioned in a previous video, the loop got killed because loops are expensive and lots of track is expensive. It's okay, and I think that it doesn't, the project itself doesn't lose a lot from losing the city center loop. However, it does kind of uh, make the city center of Mississauga a little less interesting. It would have been nice to have uh, close transit stops to all of the uh, condos to the south of Square One and to the west of Square One. Uh, because if you look at it now, those condos along those roads are actually going to be a decently long walk from the LRT. So. That's not exactly ideal. People might even consider taking a bus, depending on if, how able-bodied they are, because it's a decently long walk across parking lots, square one, and then another parking lot to this city center transit terminal. Also, kind of unfortunately, if you actually look at the stop at the city center transit terminal, it's not really anything special. It's literally just a flat, at-grade stop uh, it doesn't look like the city center terminal is really getting a uh, huge reconfiguring or anything. So it just kind of looks like another bus bay almost. It, it's not really that fantastic in my personal opinion. Um, it's also kind of unclear how services will operate. There is basically a Y junction uh, to the east where here Ontario itself meets the 403 I believe. And so it will be kind of interesting to see, since the track is essentially like this, you have a track going into the city center, a track going out to the south, out to the north, and then one that goes vertical. You kind of got to wonder what services are going to operate. You know, will, I guess some trains will operate through to Brampton from Port Credit, some trains then perhaps from Port Credit direct to the city center, some trains from Brampton direct to the city center. It's kind of unclear to me, it's kind of a weird layout, not necessarily something I think I'm a huge fan of but uh, it's what we got, so we're gonna have to live with that. So yeah, the Huron Ontario LRT, all confirmed, construction should start, I believe in early 2020 is what I heard, very exciting. So what does this mean kind of for Ontario as a whole? Well, as you guys saw this year, two new LRTs opened. We had ION over in Kitchener-Waterloo and we had the O-Train Confederation line over in Ottawa. Well, Ontario's LRT love, uh, is not ending, obviously. Currently in Toronto, we have two major LRT projects under construction, Finch West and the Crosstown. And now in Mississauga, there's going to be uh, the Huron Ontario LRT and Hamilton LRT is moving along quite well. At this point, I think it's fair to say, especially with the results of the federal election last night, none of these LRT plans are going to get canceled. It's new LRT lines. That means that in just this next couple of years, we'll have opened about six or seven new LRT lines, which is kind of crazy. If you actually look at other places around the world, even like the entire United States, I'm not sure they're going to open that many new LRT lines in this time period. So it's pretty impressive to see we're doing it. And I kind of wanted to articulate what I think the vision with these LRT lines can be. Now, I do question whether the Crosstown being above grade in some locations is really a smart decision. There's a few places where it's really just a terrible decision that they put it above grade. That being said, I do think the Crosstown will mostly be able to serve Toronto well given that it's underground for much of its route and the eastern portion will indeed have less traffic, so it's mostly okay. Finch West, of course, along with pretty much all the L other LRTs short of the O train, will all be at grade for the majority of their routes. Some of them kind of go below grade when they make interchanges like Finch and here Ontario, but beyond that, there's not much else to say. I think that these LRTs are going to be really good for local connectivity. When you look at Ontario, unfortunately for someone who enjoys transit, Ontario loves cars and the populace in Ontario just loves to drive. And Ontario is super suburban and sprawly. So I think these new LRT lines are a wise decision in order to offer some really high order of transit along key corridors in still sprawly areas. Uh, 
whether I think it would be better to spend all this money on more subways in Toronto? No, not necessarily. The GTHA itself is urbanized as a region, and so we do need to focus on connectivity outside of the core. The question is, how does LRT answer that? I think with GoRER as well, a lot of these LRTs are going to be fantastic. If you look at it, Ion, Huron, Ontario, Hamilton, uh, and the Crosstown all connect to GoRER, and they're going to be great because they're going to allow passengers to essentially get off a long distance regional RER train and then hop onto a local LRT that gets them to their final destination. As I mentioned, if the Huron Ontario LRT had have actually gone to Brampton, as many of us had hoped, and that's Brampton Go, the train station, people could have rode from, for example, Hamilton. Uh, this is this is just a hyperbole, but you could have rode an LRT from Hamilton to the GO station in Hamilton, got on a GO train, rode the GO train to the Mississauga LRT on here Ontario, got off, rode the Mississauga LRT its entire length, got off again at Brampton GO, then took another GO train out to Waterloo and then got off and got on the ION there. That's two GO train trips and three LRT trips, all without having to essentially uh, make a long transfer or take a bus. That's fantastic actually not that again not that that's a realistic trip nonetheless I think that it's it's fantastic to see that we have so many LRT projects now progressing uh, it was kind of a question of are they going to cancel some of these projects about a year or two ago when the Ford government initially got in I have to say people do criticize the Ford government and everyone uh, I'm sure has their qualms with pretty much any government but I am happy that they didn't go and just rapidly cancel all these different projects. It's exciting to me that even people on the conservative side can see the value of transit, especially transit that isn't just a subway, which as we know, Doug Ford in the past has been known to love. It's exciting to see that we're starting to get so many lines that are very similar across the province as well, because what it means is we can take our learnings on one line and disseminate them to other lines. One thing you'll notice in Canada in general is that all our big transit systems, uh, short of Calgary and Edmonton, basically use different technologies. If you look at the SkyTrain, we have the automated kind of bespoke Bombardier technology and the uh, Hyundai Rotom automated EMUs. In Calgary and Edmonton, we have high floor LRT that's based on technology basically for German subways. Uh, in Toronto, we have kind of standard-ish subways, but with an odd track gauge. Uh, in Ottawa, we have low floor LRT that's basically a metro. In Montreal, we have a kind of typical metro, except it uses rubber tires, which is normal in some areas of the world, but it's not like any of our other systems. So if you look at it, basically none of our major urban agglomerations are using the same technology right now. And sure, all of these LRTs are basically being built in the same urban agglomeration. But the exciting thing to me is the idea that you're going to have some ability to build consistency from one system to another, which is something we don't really have right now because our systems are just so different. For example, say we start getting new vehicles. Well, Metrolinx ideally can just mass order them for all the lines in the future. And it's really cool to think that all these distinct LRT lines could have the same vehicles. Uh, wayfinding is another thing that could be consistent across all these lines. And more things in the future, say that they develop a really good way of uh, doing pavers on the LRT tracks so that it looks nice or so that it saves energy or something wild like that. It's so easy then to go and deploy it to all these different LRTs because the province has basically built, you know, six or seven LRTs all using very similar specifications. And I think that's quite exciting. Anyways, guys, I'm happy that your Ontario LRT is moving forward. I'm happy Ontario is going to have so many consistent transit lines that are specs-wise very similar to one another, which allows some interchangeability. Uh, I'm just happy that it seems transit's going to be moving forward, and of course we're going to be making many, many videos over the coming years about all these new LRT systems, and we're going to be going back to Ottawa and Waterloo to film more videos there. Anyways, of course, if you enjoyed the video, consider following us on Instagram and Twitter, and as always, have a nice night. Thanks.